actually started the video yet because I'm having an ice cream. Thanks, by the way, Mark, for buying the ice cream. You're welcome. I don't think it's going to work, but I thought I might as well give the Jag a try while I'm eating my ice cream and see if it works because it might just work. So it's running, but it's not, it's not firing. I think that the timing's out. We're kind of doing everything opposite. Instead of starting A here with one A and working our way around the distributor, we started from here. When I first got the car, the mechanic said to do it the normal way. So I did it the normal way, turned the key and the exhaust blew up. So I don't think that's, you know, <laughs> what's supposed to happen. And I did it the other way and it worked and it ran. So I've got a feeling the distributor is the wrong way. And I think this is how I rectified it last time, which is by doing it from here and starting the firing order sequence and going around this way. I've had it for two years, this car. Got no idea if the gearbox is fine. Nothing, I've got no idea. I was right, it's the wrong way around. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so I open it up to that on the accelerator pedal. It, come back. it just stays open yeah. on the accelerator pedal. Um, I need to put the springs back in, they go on here and they go underneath here. I should have done it when I put the stuff back, but I forgot. We have to kind of try and calm down that idle a bit because it's kind of really rearing up and trying to get really loud. And I think I've got a solution. I saw this online, so I'm not going to take all the credit for it. But this dude, I'll put a link to his video, explained it really well what happens here. This is in the vacuum line system. I spent hours doing it the other day and now I'm going to undo it all. So that line will go into there, there'll be a T in it, and that will run down to this dump valve, which is down here. Now the one way valve will be in that line, and then this line will then go underneath and point up into here, the opposite of this one. You then blank off everything else, and supposedly he's getting 25% increase in fuel economy, and the engine starts up a lot smoother, and it kind of said it was, in a way, just less erratic, wasn't it? So, as you can see, we've got quite a bundle of different things here that supposedly, according to the video that I watched online, we don't need anymore. I've rerouted all these back lines. I don't know why you're laughing, Mark. It's going to be fine. This obviously wasn't needed. Jaguar obviously were just inefficient in what they were doing. Um, this one here, like, supposed to run for 45 seconds when the car first starts. It's a supplementary air valve. Um, it's supposed to help with the starting of the car. All these sensors and stuff, whatever that is. There's loads of this stuff. Supposedly, we don't need it. So. If you can come over here, Mark, we can show the good people what we have done. Or should I say what I've done, just in case it doesn't work? Yeah, you did, you did most stuff, so I'll give you that. Okay, so this one here comes from the top of this manifold, and it goes to a T, which carries on to the back of the distributor. This one runs underneath, comes over to the dump valve, which is, I don't know if you can see that or not, Mark, I'll move yeah. that torch, comes to the dump valve here. It comes into the bottom of it, and then the line that goes into the top of the dump valve comes all the way along, comes up underneath, so the opposite side of this one. And then you simply plug off the one on the back here. Uh, do you want to just lean over and see that a minute, Mark? So this one here, which is closest to me, that one I've put a line in and then I've put a screw in the end just to cover it over. Theoretically, that should now run a lot smoother um, on startup. We also, at the same time, took the air boxes off so I could get my arm underneath because that's what you need to do to be able to do all of this quite easily. We also put the springs back in um, so that, theoretically, these should now spring back a lot easier. They're still struggling a little bit when I put my foot on the accelerator. Um, it kind of closes and then it kind of gets about there. Doesn't go the whole way. So we're going to need some new springs. So I will try and source some of those. I think what we've got to do now is just start the car. Um, hopefully it'll be a little bit calmer than it was <laughs> earlier. It's a lot quieter, isn't it? That's a hell of a lot quieter than it was. Another thing I do need to do is this exhaust, because as you can probably see, there's a whacking hole in that, so that does need to come out. The only problem is, I don't think that mine's quite that long. I think mine comes to here. Uh, 
Nearly smacked myself in the face, but it's out. As you can see, there is quite a difference between the two. Um, there's no is it a flange on this one, whereas there is on that one. And this one's obviously quite a lot longer, as you can see. So I have marked out along here somewhere whereabouts I think I should cut. Something like that, that'll go in there. I'll put some kind of paste in there, uh, maybe some exhaust wrap. And then it's just this side, just need a flange. To couple up to this one here. So I have to order one potentially. That's a mystery to me, that is. While working out the mystery, I moved on to refitting the door locks, finding the passenger door still wouldn't open from the outside. This was due to excess plate in the pin here. So I wound it down, put it back together, lined up the pull rods, slotted them into place, using the metal clasp to lock them into place, and success. Driver's side back in, bit fiddly, but with some persistence, we got there. And I just couldn't help but take the car for its first drive into the light. issue. The springs that I've put back on for the return on the throttle pedal, um, yeah, they're kind of not returning properly, which means that when I hit the accelerator to reverse then, it shot me right back and it was pulling, so I had to slam the handbrake on, put it into park, it just, well, as you heard, it just went crazy, and um, I had to go open the bonnet and manually close the throttle pedestal. 95% of people haven't subscribed to the channel yet. Please do. If you're watching the video, just click the subscribe button. It really helps out. And please share with your family and friends and stuff of that into this kind of stuff. And that's that for that video because I need to buy some parts. Thanks for watching and please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It would really be appreciated. And I hope to see you in the next video.